Welcome, my friends, to the Bob and Brad podcast. My name is Mike Keenitz, and I'm a PT assistant. Today, I'm interviewing Rick Olderman, who is a physical therapist, and I'm going to ask him different shoulder and arm pain questions that you, our audience, had for him. Things like rotator cuff or forearm injuries, even upper trap issues. So without further ado, here is Rick. All right. The next topic is frozen shoulder. So what are the best exercises to help a frozen shoulder as it thaws or to prevent one from when it's on its way to freezing? Yeah, gosh, frozen shoulder. So folks, frozen shoulder is, is also called an adhesive capsulitis. So there's a, 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 a sac that surrounds the shoulder joint here. And in frozen shoulder, what that, and that sac is called a capsule. And so what happens is the capsule freezes up or becomes tight and prevents shoulder motion. And it typically prevents shoulder motion in a, in a pattern. So the worst motion uh, that occurs is that you can no longer reach behind your back anymore. This is internal rotation of the shoulder joint. That's the most aggressive form of shoulder mo motion. All right. The second most restricted motion becomes this external rotation where you're bringing your arm out from your body. And then the third is shoulder flexion like this. So if your pattern, if your shoulder is restricted in these patterns, this one is better than this one. And both of those are much better than reaching behind. You, you may have a adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder issues going on. So the thing is, no one really understands why adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder is occurring in the first place. So it's difficult to prevent it. So, um, and it seems to happen in women more than men. So they believe that there's an estrogen component to this, but I, I really truly don't know. So uh, frankly, well, I, I haven't found much that's, that's gonna slow frozen shoulder loss of motion down. If it's in the stages of a process of freezing, and this could take months, where you gradually lose more and more motion over, over a period of months, I, I really haven't found anything that's gonna irritate, or I'm sorry, that's gonna, prevent that from happening uh, or slow that down. Uh, and one of the things I get most concerned about is that if we aggressively try to prevent this from occurring, then what we're going to do is cause more irritation to the shoulder system, which will cause the capsule to contract even more faster. And that's why, you know, I just give people gentle motion exercises in all of these planes of motion, you know, and just teach them, look, you've, you're going to, Go through this loss of motion, expect it, try to keep as much as you can, but don't do it too aggressively because you may actually cause more lack of motion because of you irritating the whole system in the first place. So I'm sorry, I wish I had some, some miracle exercises for you, but, but I don't. Now, uh, as you're coming out, so frozen shoulder naturally occurs, you know, usually for about a year, people will go through this. Sometimes it's two years, sometimes it's six months. It just really depends on the person. But what you'll notice is that gradually some, your, your shoulder uh, capsule will start to thaw. And again, the same exercises you would, you would I would go for the shoulder flexion exercises first or, or slightly out away from center like this. That's where the things, your shoulder joint will move more freely. Start there, right? With, and you can slide your arm up the wall. You can do a, a you know, rubber band that pulls your hand up and then you pull it back down and it pulls you back up again to get that motion. So you don't have to use those shoulder motions. You, should, you could use a cable system at your gym where the, where the cable is pulling the hand up and then you pull it down and it, and it pulls you up again. So this would be the first motion I would try to go after. Then as you feel better, I would go after this motion and then find, and you can do that if you hold on to like a doorstop and your arm is like this, and then you can rotate your body away from that hand, that will start getting that motion. And I like moving the body away from the hand instead of moving the hand away from the body, because if you move the hand away from the body, and this goes for this one too, if you move the hand away from the body, it, it activates all of your rotator cuff muscles and so forth that are feeding into the capsule, right? And so if, if we're activating all of that, then we're kind of defeating the purpose. But if you move your body away from the hand, it keeps those muscles more relaxed and the capsule more relaxed and you can get better motion like that. So moving the body away from the hand in terms of the overhead motion, you would hold on to like a refrigerator door or something like that. And then just simply bend your knees, which then causes the arm to go move up for you. So you would just do something like that. All right. And then, of course, 
the back of the motion. This will be the last one. I, I don't even attempt it initially because it's just so painful for so many people. It's not worth even pursuing. So this is the interesting thing I've, I've learned from frozen shoulder. Um, I have a class four laser uh, therapy uh, laser at my clinic. And uh, I have found I've had a, I've only had a couple frozen shoulder patients that I've been able to use it with, but they have gained immediate and significant range of motion increases and pain relief. And by the way, these are frozen shoulder people who are starting to come out of the adhesive capsulitis stage rather than going into it. But uh, using the laser on, on this has really increased the range of motion and decreased in pain significantly. So what does this tell me? Well, so the, the thing about the class four laser is that um, it's, it's, at a, uh, it's at a wattage that causes the body to produce nitric oxide. Well, latest fascia research, and I don't know if Robert Schlieb talked about this in his interview with Bob or not, but latest fascial research shows that fascia relaxes in the presence of nitric oxide. So this is why I believe the laser was helping the frozen shoulder because it is a capsular or, or there's a fascial component to this. And so the laser causes the fascia to relax, thereby releasing its grip on the shoulder joint. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I've never heard of that. I guess for our listeners, the laser light... I'm guessing yours just has like a wand, kind of looks like an ultrasound machine. Is that what yours kind of looks like? Yeah. So their class four, I think is the most powerful class on the market right now. I, I, I've experimented with class three lasers. There's class three and three B and so forth. Uh, but those aren't nearly, it seems powerful enough to get the nitric oxide production in the body and to make deeper changes to the tissues in, in the body. Is it a red light or it's it's red light, yeah. Okay, I thought, I thought. almost all lasers are red light. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining us again. Where can people find more information about you at? Uh, they if they go to rickolderman.com, uh, I have lots of free stuff there. I have some uh, blogs. I have all my home programs, my practitioner training program, and you, there's a contact form there, of course, for me uh, that you can use to con to reach out if you like. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you for joining us. My pleasure, Mike. Thanks for having me.